Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. Here are my top five zero running back candidates that you should be drafting right now in the mid to late rounds of your fantasy football drafts. I love personally drafting a hero running back type team where I take one running back early and then I wait a long time to get, you know, my second, third, fourth running back. Now this year, obviously I'm taking more running backs. The way people are drafting, there's more value in drafting some of those bell cow running backs. So some drafts I'm going after a second one, but it's very easy to wait until rounds eight, nine, 10, 11, and still get massive value in these running backs. Typically I'm looking for guys that we deem 40% guys, players who have 40% of the work. And if there is an injury, unfortunately in front of them, they can elevate into a 65 to 75% role. But this year, we've still got guys who are lead backs, who are already on the field, getting 60, 65% of the work early. Drafting zero running back, even though you can get those bell cow guys early, you can supplement with somebody later to get you already on the field in week one with the lead back roll at an extremely cheap price. Leave me a reply down below letting me know which later round running backs you're targeting in your drafts and if you would be as kind as to share the video, that is the number one tool as far as the YouTube algorithm is concerned. If my viewers are saying, hey, we're sharing this video with you, you need to watch this video that I already like. YouTube views that very favorably on the content creator and pushes the video out to more people. So if you would be as kind as to click that share button, I would greatly appreciate it. And let's hit it. He's a legend. Wanted to take a second to thank one of our partners here on the channel, EstablishTheRun.com. They do great work when it comes to season-long fantasy football, when it comes to daily fantasy, when it comes to sports betting, everything all in one place from some of the biggest and best players in daily fantasy and sports betting that exists. So go give them a look over at Establish The Run. Use promo code SMIZLIFE at checkout or just click the link down below, smizzle.tv slash ETR and get 10% off the early bird where you get the DFS bundle, you get the fantasy football, all the best ball rankings that they have and all their content behind the paywall for 10% off of the listed price. So go check out everything that they have over at establishtherun.com. Rashad Penny, I already mentioned that he is, uh, you know, there's a couple of guys on this list who are already getting massive amounts of work early in the season. You look at his game log from the end of last season, he was putting in ridiculous work getting great volume he's not gonna help you a whole lot when it comes to like getting targets he's not a pass catching back and when it comes to these running backs in this range i'm gonna get a whole lot from the but what about crowd right but what about ken walker they drafted ken walker but what about him well what about him he definitely is there they definitely drafted him but they also drafted Rashad Penny a few years ago, and everybody was on the but what about Rashad Penny train, including myself. They spent all this money on Rashad Penny, and guess what? Chris Carson just came out and just rolled for a couple of years until he got injured, and now Rashad Penny has been the guy. We have the same coaching staff that drafted Penny and didn't play him for a couple of years that now are playing Penny and drafted Ken Walker. They just like having depth at running back. They also are going to have to establish the hell out of it considering their quarterback situation unless and up until they get Jimmy G. But even if you go get Jimmy G Seattle, you're still going to have to establish the run because he's not that great of a quarterback, but he's better than, you know, Drew Locke and he's better than Geno Smith. So there is something to that. But with a better quarterback, that bodes well for even a non-pass catching running back. I'm going to explain why. Running backs do better when their team is able to move the ball down the field and not just go three and out every single time their offense gets it. So with better quarterback play comes more extended drives, comes more playing from ahead, comes more opportunities at touchdowns, which is the things that Rashad Penny excels at. He right now is being drafted as the 30th running back off the board and has an ADP on underdog of 93. I believe he is the 65 to 70% guy in this Seattle Seahawks offense. I could be wrong about that. Maybe it's Ken Walker from week one. I just don't think that it is. And Rashad Penny is coming in at a ridiculous discount based on what his workload should be early in the season, a fantastic zero RB candidate. And going to our second guy, tell me if you've heard me mention the name Devin Singletary at all this offseason. He remains... One of the best zero RB guys. I think this is about to change though. Devin Singletary is the running back 33 off the board. He has an ADP of 99. Training camp has started for the Buffalo Bills. They are already at practice. The but what about crowd is still out on Devin Singletary. But what about James Cook? 
they drafted James Cook in the fourth round. He was pretty explosive and should play uh, on some passing downs, if not all passing downs. The Buffalo Bills did try to go out and sign J.D. McKissick to play that role, and then he got, you know, they matched the offer. He, he just went back. Right? He's like, nah, I like it in Washington. I like it in D.C. I'm going to stay here. So they, they went out and got Cook, and then, sure, the rookie's going to get some run, but the guy who's getting all the early work on first and second down minimum, and maybe a lot of the third downs as well, people are already projecting, oh, James Cook is going to be the guy. He's going to be the guy. Well, here's what, you know, Greg Thompson had to say. He is at the practices right now for the Buffalo Bills. He's going over it. First reply that he got, here's the offense, Cook, Singletary, Duke. And then it goes down to, well, somebody guessing Singletary is still the starter. Singletary easily got every first team rep. If you've been watching the videos on this channel, you know how much we've been saying that Devin Singletary has been underpriced throughout draft season. Things are about to change. His ADP is about to jump. If you're doing drafts right now, I would assume that he's, you know, he's, his current ADP is 99th. I could see this rising to like 75 in the next couple of weeks as more practice footage comes out, as more information comes out, and possibly the first or second um preseason game when we get reps from Josh Allen and the first team if he plays 15 or 20 snaps and Devin Singletary's on the field for 15 or 18 of those snaps that ADP is really going to fly as you're the starting running back on arguably the number one offense in the NFL and all of a sudden people realize why is he going around pick 100 he is going to jump by the value while you still can uh, I don't see him jumping into like the top four or five rounds but like going in round eight nine is still ridiculous Go check out the best ball drafts that they have over on Underdog Fantasy. If you use promo code Al Smizzle, A L S M I Z Z L E, you get a deposit match up to $100 that you can use on anything. The pick them, the live drafts. You can play the Pup Cup, the Great Dane, Best Ball Mania 3, where you've got, I don't know, $2 million up top, $1 million a second, another million dollars for whoever finishes the highest scoring team throughout the first 14 weeks. And I'm sure they're going to have about six more. $5 puppy drafts where they're, you know, between 20 to $50,000 to first place. So go check out all the great drafts that they have over on underdog fantasy. My next player is Rashad Stevenson. Or sorry. My next player is Ramondre Stevenson, who is being drafted as the running back 34, 104 on his ADP right now. That's climbed. He was around 120. So we've already seen a jump from him, but it's still uh, a value price. For me, at least. I think that there is already a cooked-in role for him as the old James Wright role plus, right? Where he's going to get maybe like Deion Lewis type run from, what was that, 2015, 2016, where he was getting like 10, 12 carries and like four or five targets a game. Uh, if that's his only job, that's enough. But if he expands that and takes over any part of of Damian Harris's work, somebody who ran really good on touchdowns last year, uh, and you should expect some regression in terms of that for him this year. Now we have Ramondre stepping into quite possibly a much bigger role in 2022. We saw last year in preseason how much of a stud he was at breaking long touchdowns and how much of a pounder he is inside the tackles. So uh, if he sees any increase in his work inside the five and inside the 10, maybe gets you 12 to 15 touches a week. Perfect for best ball with his touchdown upside on this run heavy offense that they're going to run in New England. Next up, Rahi Mostair. As I said before, you're going to see conflicting reports when it comes to the early parts of training camp. Just last night, it was reported that Mostair is not completely back from his uh, knee injury last season and everybody already freaking out about Mostair. Uh, because of his injury history, somebody who has not been able to finish seasons, although he's one of the fastest players in the NFL. Currently being drafted as a running back 58 with an ADP of 187. So I hesitate to say that anybody is free, but like he's pretty free considering that you're drafting him as you're running back five or running back six. You're not putting very much uh, draft equity into him and getting somebody who has massive upside if he stays healthy. There's certainly a spike opportunity. They brought him in uh, or that the new head coach in Miami was the offensive coordinator in San Francisco, knows that he's uh, comfortable with the offensive style that they want to run and was comfortable enough to bring Mostair over with him. And then the other side of that conflicting report was this morning where the beat writer said Mostair is ready to go week one of training camp. We're all, you know, we're day one. He's ready. He's not injured. He's completely back. Uh, and Mostair is going to be 
uh, the guy from day one of training camp. Now, again, I understand if you can't bring yourself to draft uh, Brother Raheem here because he's been injured so much in the past, but uh, look, you're not having to pay very much of a premium. If you're drafting uh, and waiting on running backs, he is a perfect shot to take. When you're drafting best ball teams, you need to change your mindset a little bit. There's no transactions. There's no way to fix it on the waiver wire. Uh, so you have to draft with the mindset of things are going to go as planned. And so if you say that Mostert is going to play 12 games this year, right? Let's say he's going to miss a few weeks. He's going to get injured, right? You even factor that in, but he's not going to have like a season ending injury. Let's say he plays 12 games. And in those 12 games, he gets 15 to 20 touches with his big playability in this offense that they are porting over from San Francisco to Miami. And the fact that he's going to very likely be running against light boxes due to the presence of Tyreek Hill on one side and Jalen Waddle on the other. There is big time spike week upside for extremely low 188th overall price tag. Uh, give me brother Raheem in my best ball drafts and my last pick, super late pick, ultra free, super late. Rookie Zamir White, I mean, look, big time speed, 4'4", uh, 40, good size, 6 feet, 214, 215 pounds, has an ADP of 205.8. I'm going to tell you why I'm interested and why I've been clicking Zamir White is my RB5, RB6 uh, in my best ball draft so far. Now, look, I do think it's the, the ADP on Josh Jacobs is low, right? It's, it's low versus what he could do. But also the gap between him and Zamir White, considering two things. One, Kenyon Drake is in the final year of his contract. Two, new coaching staff and new front office that did not pick up the fifth year option on Jacobs. I think that's smart. You guys know what I think about how you should be dealing with running backs. You draft one in the third round, you play him for a couple of years, you draft another one two years later, and you just keep cycling through those middle round draft picks and don't end up paying your running back from a salary cap NFL point of view. So if they're possibly going to let Jacobs walk and there's no ties between this regime and the regime that drafted Jacobs and was so tied to pounding him as much as they were, Zamir White, in my opinion, could start the season as a 35 to 40% guy already having a role in this offense, talented in the pass game. And with an eye towards him picking up more volume as the season goes along, even without a Jacobs injury. But if Jacobs does go down, I believe that Zamir White and not Kenyon Drake is going to be the Raiders' number one at running back. He is talented enough to do it. He has been solid all through college, big time speed, good pass catcher, and he is kind of free. So giving Zamir White a, a click as your RB5, RB6. Currently, what is his? He is being drafted as the 63rd running back off the board. It's, it's a why not proposition, right? You're going to lose absolutely nothing by clicking him in round 17 or 18 of your drafts with the possibility of massive upside. In the case of A, no injury. He should be being drafted in probably, uh, if he was the RB2 in this offense, playing 35, 40% of the time for sure, he would have like a 12th, 13th round draft price. He's currently going in the 17th, 18th, 19th rounds of drafts. But if not, if there is that Jacobs injury or they just kind of shift and say, look, we're not committed to him. We're going to, we're going to pivot and give this kid more run as the season goes along. You work yourself into a big time spot uh, where you're getting massive profit and usable weeks from your RB five or RB six. Those are my five zero RB running backs. Let me know who you would draft down below in the comments and look out for another video right there. He's a legend.